Uh, before we get started, uh, I'm just going to ask uh, Connor a number of questions from media, but perhaps Connor, you can just your thoughts, reaction to the the medical situation uh, with um, with Connor with Kobe Cave. Uh, sort of your reaction and your thoughts on that. Yeah, honestly, this is uh, this is devastating news. Uh, I mean, I just think uh, you know, Kobe is uh, such a strong guy. Um, he's a good Saskatchewan boy, so. Um, he's as tough as they come, and um, if anyone's going to get through it, I think it's going to be Colby Cave. But I think that uh, you know all the fans out there, all, you know everyone just needs to to keep Colby, Emily, his wife, and and the entire family just in their thoughts and prayers, and just sending out good vibes for them because I mean that's all we can do. You know we're we're all stuck inside, so um, we can just you know think and and pray that uh, that he comes out of this and and. Uh, you know, pray that the family can get through it as well because I'm sure it's I mean I can't imagine how hard it is on them as well so um, obviously it's devastating and, and Colby's a guy that um, is so well liked in our dressing room um, I'm sure he's been he's, he's so well liked in, in any room he's been in I mean he's such a good guy so um, you know there's no real way to 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 say and express how how you know you're feeling about it and and um, but you know, obviously it's devastating and, and you just you just pray that he wakes up and, and, and the family's okay. Thank you. Um, earlier today, it was announced that the Oilers players have gone together and made a contribution of $100,000 for uh, COVID-19 assistance. Maybe speak about uh, what's behind that and why uh, the players felt this was important. Yeah, this is something that uh, has been in the works for a long time, you know, a lot of back and forth. Um, you know, we, we wanted to to do something right away, um, and and it's it's gone a little bit slower than than we anticipated, but um, you know, it wasn't a tough sell at all. You know, everyone wanted to be involved, um, just working out the logistics of getting the money and how we were going to do that. I mean, it was it was that was the the, the slower part. So, um, you know, it's obviously important that uh, that that the Oilers are are uh, you know contributing to the community. Um, you know, obviously, Alberta and and uh, oil country is. Uh, is suffering, you know, both through the the, the economic times and and uh, obviously through COVID. So, um, you know, it's definitely uh, definitely good for for us to step up and and uh, help out any way we can and, and try to affect uh, as many people as we can. First question from uh, Jim Matheson, Post Media. Um, you've uh, started this 15-minute uh, uh, video workout that you've been doing on social media for those that are at home. Um, he's asking sort of what's behind it. And then his question, wondering if you had to uh, dumb it down for the likes of Jim Matheson or other members of the media uh, going in. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the idea came from Jeff Jackson, uh, my agent. Uh, he called me er very early on. Um, when, when his kids were, he's got kids that uh, are a little younger and, and uh, you know, need something to do and we're sick of playing video games. So, um, you know, he wrote down a couple exercises on, on a whiteboard and, and uh, you know, his kids were able to do the workout in, in 10, 15 minutes and, you know, still get their activity in. So he, he thought that there might be something there and he brought it to Gary and I and, and thought that, uh, you know, we could put something together and obviously with the help of Gary, uh, putting workouts together and, and you know, running it through his social channel as well. Um, I think it's it's gone over well, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully, kids and you know, I'm not sure if Jim Matheson's doing it, but hopefully, uh, hopefully, kids and, and other people are uh, are uh, are doing it at home and, and trying to find a way to stay active during this time. A uh, question from uh, Terry Jones, Post Media. A lot of Oilers and um, hockey players, etc., are associated with charities. Just wondering how. Maybe your charities or other charities are, are dealing with what's going on at this time as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's lots of different stuff going on. I know Jumpstart uh, started a program. Um, you know, it's 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 important that you know we're all doing our part and, and giving back. Um, yeah. A question from. Uh, Steven Semis from Hockey Night in Canada, uh, they're doing a poll on goals of the year uh, and your goal where you uh, you deked uh, Morgan Riley and scored has made it to the finals. What, what do you have to say about that goal and maybe that the, the fans have responded so strongly for it? Yeah, obviously that was a special goal um, to score to score that uh, in my hometown in front of lots of friends and family. Um, you know, that was special, especially 
you know, the Oilers and myself have struggled uh, playing in Toronto in the past years. So obviously to get a win and, and score a goal like that was, was special to me and special to my family. So, um, you know, it means a lot that, uh, that the fans uh, responded so well, so uh, excitedly to that. And, uh, you know, I voted me into the finals. That's real exciting. And, um, you know, last year I had a goal of the year candidate. I'm not sure if it ended up being goal of the year, but uh, it's something that, uh, you know, I take a lot of pride in to, to try to be in that category each and every year. Um, the Central Scout rankings came out yesterday. Uh, Joshua Clipperton from the Canadian Press. Looking at the NHL draft this year, which may be online, just so, just wondering if you're you're thinking about uh, guys like Lafreniere and Byfield and what they're going to miss out on from the NHL draft. What was it like to be there in person, and uh, how different do you think it would be without that opportunity? I was actually joking with my friends that uh, they were lucky they don't have to do the combine, but. Uh, um, you know, obviously they are going to miss out on a lot. It's such a special experience. Um, even the combine is as difficult as some of those, those, uh, those bikes, bike tests are, but, uh, they're going to miss out on a lot. And, um, but it is what it is. There's lots of people missing out on lots of things right now. And, and um, but we all got to do our part. And, and, uh, unfortunately they may have to give up, uh, their draft experience, but, um, you know, the, the important thing is the draft and, and getting drafted. And if you don't get drafted, it's, it's not the end of the world either. There's still lots of guys that, uh, that can make it after that. So um, it's obviously a little bit of a different situation for them, but it is for, for everyone else as well. So, um, yeah. Um, sticking with the draft, a couple of questions from Daniel Nugent Bowman at The Athletic. Um, just going back to the draft lottery, which is something that at some point will be coming up. Just wondering what that was like for you that day, maybe driving to the studio, wondering what was, one, what was going to happen. Just how it was for you and what were you uh, thinking about or talking about with your parents? Yeah, my whole family, my mom, dad, and, uh, and brother, we all went down to the studio. Um, and we had dinner beforehand. So um, it, was, it was a long day. I mean, there's, there's so many different possibilities. It's kind of the only the only time you can, you can really just picture yourself on, you know, 16 different teams. I think uh, it was definitely a different day. I think we ran the, whatever the, the lottery test mock thing. I don't know what it is where, you know, it just has all the, the odds and it spits out a team. I think we ran that thing probably a hundred times that day. So um, you obviously never know what's going to happen, um, you know, and, and if I were to do it over again, I would definitely not, uh, I wouldn't have gone to the studio. I just think, uh, you know, it was uh, it was something that that we were hesitant on um, originally, and uh, um, and and it turned out to be for good reason. I mean, it was going to be an emotional time no matter what, whatever team was picked, and and uh, you know, obviously Edmonton was was uh, one of the possibilities, and and um, you know, we were surprised, and and you know, people people just thought I was upset, and. You know, made a big deal about that, which uh, which wasn't the case at all. We were just uh, just uh, more in disbelief than anything. Um, so um, if I were to do it over again, I definitely wouldn't have gone to the studio, but uh, it was definitely a, a wild day for sure. A question from Tim Campbell, NHL.com. Thinking about in the past when you've had vacations or breaks, how, how difficult or easy is it to get back to skating? And, and how quickly do you find you, you find your, your stride? And um, and maybe skill set that you're not able to practice right now. Yeah, it's always tough. Um, I'm a guy that doesn't take much time off the ice at all. Um, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, but obviously going through the injury this summer, I was I was off for for a long time off my skates for probably you know three months. Um, so you know, we're looking like we're going to be in that type of a situation here. So um, you know, maybe lean on uh, lean on that experience a little bit, but. It's always tough when, when you're off the ice for a while and, and you got to come back because you can't really replicate um, the type of uh, the type of cardio uh, you know cardio that you need to play hockey and, and uh, you can't really replicate skating at all. So um, you can run as many stairs or bike as many whatever on your spin bike as you as you want, but you can't replicate it at all. So um, it's important that you get the guys back on the ice as soon as possible and. We'll make sure everyone gets uh, the time they need to get back up and running and, and make sure that uh, it's safe uh, to return to play for everybody. A, a lot of ideas are being thrown around uh, for playoff formats. This is from Stephen Wino, Associated Press. What, what do you think from what you've seen or what you're thinking would make maybe for the, 
the fairest uh, Stanley Cup playoffs? Well, I said in in in, uh, in a press conference, uh, a Zoom press conference, uh, a couple of weeks ago, that uh, the fairest season is a, is a, uh, a full season. Um, I think if there's any way we can get a full season in, you know, that means for for the Oilers finishing out our 11 games and and uh, and hopefully you know, making a playoff spot and playing in the playoffs, uh, you know, regular playoffs, um, you know, best four out of seven. And, and um, you know, so, but, you know, it's looking more and more like that might not be, be the case as this goes on, but, um, you know, there's lots of time. Um, you know, I know guys are, are uh, you know, preparing to, to possibly having to play in the play or play in the, play in the summer. And, um, you know, guys just want to play. So whenever that is, uh, we don't know, but, you know, I, I know guys are still preparing like there's going to be a season. Question from Mark Spector, sportsnet.ca. As, uh, as a prominent face of hockey, what's it been like at a time like this when hockey takes a backseat to pretty much everything? You know, for, for the first little bit, it was actually okay. You know, I was uh, enjoying some nice downtime, but, um, you know, I was actually sick myself, so I was recovering from from being sick as well. So uh, for the first couple of days, it was okay. But, um, you know, now it's, uh, it's dragging on and it's, it's wearing on, on me and it's wearing on everyone. So I think we want to get back to regular life as, uh, as we know it as soon as possible. And, um, you know, but at the same time, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're taking care of everybody and, and uh, you know, health and safety is paramount right now. So you know, we all got to do our part to fight this thing together. More of a lighter question. Question from Jonathan Davis, NHL Network Radio. Which player, in your opinion, is the best or most creative chirper on the ice? <laughs> uh, you know, there's not a ton of chirping that goes on um, on the ice, but, um, you know, Dowdy's always talking. I think uh, whenever I play Dowdy, I, I'm talking to him every shift. So and he, always, uh, he always likes to remind me, uh, you know, when uh, – when he stops me and, and uh, if I find a way to score a goal or get a point in the game, how, how he probably wasn't on the ice. So um, he, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the best D men uh, in the league right now, if not the best. And, and uh, he's been doing it for a long, long time. So it's always a fun battle to go up against him. Um, one final question, uh, Reed Wilkins from uh, Ched Radio. How would you sum up mentally how you've been able or how you've been handling about this, not playing, not knowing when you're, when things are going to restart? How do you handle it mentally? Yeah, mentally it's, it's tough, uh, but it's tough for everyone. And I think that, uh, that, uh, um, you know, that, that, that kind of, that kind of makes me feel better knowing that, that we're all in this thing together. Um, you know, and it's not just one person that, uh, that's stuck inside. It's, it's everyone. So, um, and this is where you lean on your family, your friends, and, and uh, all your loved ones. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm calling my parents all the time, calling my brother all the time. I got buddies back home I'm always talking to. So um, this is where you need to lean on your loved ones and, and uh, not only for yourself, but to make sure they're okay as well. So um, you know, we all need to help each other through this, uh, this crazy time. And, um, you know, we do that by staying Staying in contact, uh, you know, whether it's Zoom or FaceTime or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, I've definitely been doing that a lot. Thank you very much, Connor. Thanks to all the members of the media on the call. And uh, everybody uh, stay safe and have a good long weekend. Thank you very much.